mentioned uh, the meeting is being live streamed. It's being recorded. We're going to post it on our website, hocobydesign.com. Um, I've already encouraged you and everybody's uh, great with the mute on so that we cut down on the background noise. Um, there are going to be two points during tonight where we're going to call on each of you and, um, and ask you to speak. Um, but in between that at the beginning, and then we're also gonna do that at the end. We're gonna ask if you have a question that you wanna make sure um, the group sees, you can send the question into the chat. So the chat is at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Um, make sure that the chat button turns blue, and then you can select who you wanna send your chat to, and you can send it to everyone if for the entire group. Um, we can't promise that we'll get through all the questions tonight, but we can promise that we will um, note them and have them for the team so that we can uh, take them into account and follow up. So that's the housekeeping. Okay, um, then if you can go to the next slide for me, please, Mary. Uh, this one about our focus for today's discussion? That's correct. Okay. All right, and I just wanted to add my uh, welcome and thank you for joining the crew for this project. Um, it looks like it's fantastic participation. Um, I, I looked at the list. It seems like we got a lot of great viewpoints and things, and I think you're really going to make this plan a lot better with your fingerprints on it. So with that, um, we're going to go through a presentation this evening. This is probably the one meeting that we will do the most talking because we're sort of launching off the project, building our foundation, making sure we um, get as much information in your hands tonight as possible. Um, and then from that point forward, hopefully you'll see with each meeting that the relationship starts to shift and you're going to do more, more of the talking and we'll do more of the listening. Um, and that's going to start tonight, but um, it's going to ramp up and be more um, uh, talking on your end as we go. So if you can go to the next slide, please, Mary. The slides that I'm going to go through are organized in the same way that the agenda uh, for the meeting was dispersed. And so um, the first thing we're going to do is just go through some general introductions um, and then we'll just work through the agenda. If you have it with you, you can kind of preview sort of where we're going. So if you can go to the next slide with uh, the consultants on. Um, so as was mentioned, my name is Matt Noonkester and I'm joined by Jarrah Smith um, and we represent City Explained. We're a consulting firm out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we do comprehensive planning all around the country. Um, I think if you force me to count, I'm somewhere around 40 plans that I've either led or been a part of, and I just really enjoy it. And the best part about it is kind of getting engaged with the community. I'm um, really seeing where the compass is pointing um, to see where we want to go in the future. And so we get really excited about comprehensive plans. So City Explained is going to be the lead firm for this project. Um, and then you see we do have a, a really deep bench of um, specialists that we're going to be calling on from time to time throughout the process. Um, so you might meet some of these folks and they might go away for a little bit, then they'll come back again. Um, but you see here we have um, some firms that are uh, local, like right in your backyard. And we also have some firms that will provide some kind of national perspective um, as we kind of look at all the ideas and all the opportunities that are facing Howard County. And so I won't go through all the names, but I will just generally hit the topics that they're representing. So you see community character, um, hopefully with the tagline of HOCO by design, you'll see there's a new emphasis this time around on engagement. That's part of the by design because engagement will lead to the conclusions, but also looking at the physical form and development of the county and really emphasizing character and things like that. So we have multiple firms on the team um, who help us with an urban design um, perspective. And so we have that going. We also have a transportation consultant and an agriculture consultant, agriculture specialist, in order to help round out the viewpoints and the things we'll be looking at. We have a demographic and market firm um, that will also be helping us um, confirm kind of what's out there in terms of opportunities, but also what markets might shape and look like going into the future. And um, then we have an environmental resources firm as well. So that's the consulting team. You can go to the next slide, please, Mary. But as I mentioned, this is a team effort. And so while we're kind of providing some organization and some effort and resources, um, really uh, groups like this are what are gonna really make the plan strong and uh, well-received at the end. 
And so what I thought I wanted to do here was just there are so many people on the call and so many different perspectives and things. I wanted to try and go through a quick roll call with you um, where you can have a uh, lightning round introduction. And I would like to try to keep it to 30 seconds or less, if you don't mind, just to make sure that we stay on pace with our meeting and that we end when we were scheduled to end. Um, but as Kate had mentioned, we are going to have a second round of this at the, towards the end of the meeting. So if there's anything else you want to just get out there for us to start considering as we go through our process, there will be time to do that. So um, in these 30 seconds, I, if you don't mind, I'd like you to concentrate on a couple of things. One is just introduce yourself with your name. And if you represent an organization or if you're um, a resident, a business owner, if you live or work here, those kind of things. I'd like to know how long you've been here because some people have different perspectives if they've been here for decades versus a new arrival. Um, and then if you can just give me the one phrase or one word on what is your number one priority for the county moving forward. And again, we don't need to go on a, on a long explanation of that right now. This is just more of kind of a straw vote, a straw poll vote. Um, and then we're going to have more time at the end to expand on those things as you want to. So um, if we can just go through, we'll go through roll call. And Kate, if you can help me on this, um, we'll just make sure we get to hear from everybody for about 30 seconds now. And get to know All right. So I'm going to go down through the list. And the first person I see is Angelica Daly. Um, Angelica, if you could unmute yourself. Yep. And I think Sue Song, it looks like you've joined and maybe if you could mute yourself, I think we were getting some background noise from you. Okay. Mute, it's in the bottom middle of your screen. That would be a great help. Bottom of the screen. There we go. Okay, great. Angelica. Hi, uh, yes. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, my name is Angelica Bailey. I'm representing the Maryland Building Industry Association. I work in Howard County. I've been doing this for uh, about three years. Um, and I would probably say that my um, greatest goal here is for all of us to maybe meld all of the different interests in Howard County and uh, make sure that everything is well represented and we continue to um, strengthen this this ecosystem that we have. Great, right. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next I see on my list is Brian Cornell. Brian. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Cornell. Um, a, uh, I'm actually the campus master planner at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory down in Maryland. Or down in the down towards Maple Lawn. Um, I've uh, been at the laboratory for about four years. Uh, before that, I actually worked as a uh, I'm a landscape architect by training. Uh, I'm very familiar with Catherine Mann and Scott Reichel, as well as the team at Biohabitat. So it's good working with some fellow colleagues. Uh, and I guess the, the, for me, the the greatest thing for for this effort is to really look at the opportunity that or opportunities that Howard County has in terms of how it wants to position itself for future development, not just within the county, but how it connects to the adjacent counties and not only DC and, and also the city of Baltimore. Great, thank you. Thank you. I think um, we are on to Kathy, Kathy Hudson. If you could unmute yourself. My name is Kathy Hudson. Uh, I've been in the county for over about 60 years when I had a five digit phone number and got the operator. I couldn't dial my phone. Um, I have, um, I represent probably several groups. I'm a farmer. Um, I am a citizen activist. Um, I believe in the environment, you know, having good environmental planning along with uh, the growth that we have. Um, and I guess my priority would be um, to have balance in our growth, to balance the environment, um, public spaces, um, you know, affordable housing. I mean, just a lot of, uh, so we just don't have one product. Great, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Um, Chris Chen, we've got you next. And if Kathy could remute. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Chris Chen. 
Um, I've lived in Howard County since 1985 uh, until I retired. I worked in Howard County from 93 onward. Uh, I'm not sure who I am representing. Um, maybe bicycling advocates of Howard County, uh, possibly the Environmental Sustainability Board. Uh, my vision out of Howard, out of this process, this process is the 8 to 80 community. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Okay, I see um, Chris Wells is next. Chris Wells. Yes, hi, uh, I'm Chris Wells. I live in Ellicott City and I've lived in the county uh, for six years. Before that, I lived in other parts of the region, the Baltimore region. Uh, I um, My objective for the plan is really to come up with a vision that will maintain the quality of life that I think is so appealing in Howard County. Great. Thank you. Okay, Cole Schnorf. If you could unmute yourself. Okay. Hi. Great, we can hear you. Oh, it looks like you remuted yourself. Okay, you should be set. Hi. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cole Schnorf. Um, I've lived in the county for 28 years, worked in the county for 34 years. I'm with uh, Mannequin um, LLC as a commercial real estate company. I'm also active in NEILP, the Commercial Industry Association. And I um, also have a child with a developmental disability, so I'm active with the ARC. So I would also bring the perspective of the development, developmentally disabled community and their families. Uh, the major issue for me that I'm interested in is maintaining economic growth to maintain the vitality of the community. Thank, Thank you. you. Right next, I see Elliot Goldstein. And if Cole, if you could remute, great. Thank you. Elliot? I uh, guess it's me, Elliot Finkelstein. Um, I have been in probably about 50 years. I'm now retired and living in Woodstock. And um, I basically represent the Commission on Disabilities, the advisory uh, commission for the county. And um, as the county grows, I would like to make sure that uh, as we make our plans, that it includes there's inclusion for everybody in the county to participate. So that's probably my main focus right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Grace Kovacic. Hi, I've uh, lived in Ellicott City. Um, Kathy, I just realized you've lived here longer than I. Okay, 51 years. Um, my first general plan was 1982. Wow. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm now participating again. I think this is number four. So for those who know me, Joan and a couple of others who've done this before, um, welcome back to the table. Um, so, uh, what am I looking for? Um, balance, diversity, regionalism, transportation, um, and a continuing, continuing quality of life, strong education system, and health system in Howard County. Great, thank you. All right. Next, I have a uh, JTAB, Siddiqui, JTAB. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Jahan Tafadiki. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for the Howard County Public School System, uh, representing uh, the school system on this committee. Um, I have been a Howard County resident for 20 years, proud graduate of Wild Lake High School. And um, you know, my number one priority as, uh, as a school system leader is certainly education, but also as a parent of a five-year-old, um, wanting to see the county continue to be the amazing place it is to live, work, play, learn, um, so that he uh, makes the same decision that I and my wife and I did uh, and stay in the county uh, for, for a very long time. 
right? Right. Thank you. All right, uh, Jason Van Kirk. Hi, uh, I'm Jason Van Kirk. Uh, I've lived in the county for 15 years. I uh, work here as well. I have a, a couple kids in the school system here um, at the same time. And uh, I represent Elm Street Development. We're residential uh, land developers and uh, with an office here in Ellicott City. Um, I, I think my main uh, goal here is you know attainable housing some people might call it the missing middle of uh you know not just having the most expensive houses and 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 uh, uh lower income housing but you know the whole strata uh to provide everybody the opportunities that many of you are talking about living here eight to eighty kids wanting to do it as well uh thank you thank you great okay next step we have joan lankos Hi, I'm Joan Lankos. Uh, I spent uh, 10, 10 years on the Howard County Planning Board. Um, I uh, have participated, as Grace pointed out, um, in the 2000 general plan, Plan Howard 2030. So this will be my third time at the table. Mm -hmm. um, I currently work for Hickory Ridge Community Association as their land use liaison. Uh, did I say I've lived in the county for 45 years? Um, my number one priority is responsible growth that serves the entire community. Okay, great. Excellent. Um, next, I see uh, David Nitkin. David. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is David Nitkin. Uh, I am here representing uh, Howard County General. Uh, so, um, uh, worked for the county government, and I've been here for more than two decades. Uh, so I live here, own property, work here. Uh, I'm very committed uh, uh, to this county. Glad to see so many uh, familiar faces, and looking forward to meeting uh, more of you as we go ahead. I, I would say my type, my top priority is um, sustainability of equity and opportunity for. Uh, everyone for as for as many people as possible in in this in this county going forward right thank you thanks all right uh joel gallahue hi there um my name's joel and uh i've been in howard county for 19 years and uh i am um here i believe uh as a resource i've done planning for a lot longer than that <laughs> in different jurisdictions. Um, and what uh, one of the ones that I've worked in was with the Howard County Schools in the past and uh, working in capital planning. Uh, but I presently do long range planning for Harford County and uh, hopefully can um, draw on some of my background to share some ideas um, because I do think this is a great county to live in. And, um, and I'd like it to be available to uh, everyone uh, going forward, including our children. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now I see uh, Josh. Josh, do unmute yourself? Hi, I'm Josh Lennis. I am a Uniserve director with the Howard County Education Association, and I am their representative here. Um, I have worked in the county for the last two years. Um, and it's really our goal to ensure that the, the plan is done in a way that's equitable and ensures that all of our learners and our educators uh, have the best environment possible uh, in our schools uh, so that we can have the best, maintain the best school system that we have. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kevin, Kevin McAlilly. Hello, everyone. It's good to see so many familiar faces and so many differing viewpoints. It's a fantastic group that we have here tonight. Uh, I've been in the county uh, since uh, 1991, 29 years. It seems like it's been just yesterday. Uh, I am a proud grandfather. I'm an active boot camp participant. I like to run and bike all the trails. 
Uh, I am a citizen, citizen activist. I wear several hats in the community. I'm the chair of the Wild Lake Village Board. I'm vice chair of the planning board. I'm vice chair of the Howard Equal Works, and uh, I'm a BIPOCO board member, uh, founder of the Wild Lake Village School Trail, and founder of the um, Community uh, Ecology Institute Bike Rest Stop. Uh, just a few things. Uh, I am looking for balance. Uh, diversity, uh, definitely uh, working with those individuals with differing viewpoints. Great, thank you. Very great. Um, Kristen Russell. Kristen. Hey, everybody. I'm Kristen Russell. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Affairs at Columbia Association. Um, I have been with CA for a year now, and I've actually only been in Maryland for a little over two years. So perhaps I can bring some outside perspective, um, but certainly my professional um, obligation and goal in this undertaking will be to um, kind of guide the vision that um, Howard County has for Columbia and the future of Columbia. Thank you. Great. Uh, next up, Larry. Larry Tweel. Larry, if you could unmute yourself. All right. Why don't we come back to Larry? Uh, why don't we move to Leonardo McClarty? Leonardo. Hello, Leonardo McClarty. Um, I'm president of the Howard County Chamber of Commerce, and so here representing the Howard County Chamber. I've been at the chamber as well as in Howard County slash Maryland, all of the above, for six years. Um, I came here when I accepted the position, originally from the uh, Metro Atlanta area. Um, also, Mary have three school-aged children, uh, twins in elementary school and a middle schooler. Um, so certainly don't disagree with anything that's been said earlier, um, but from a chamber perspective, certainly want to see um, business and, and economic development supported in the plan. And, and as we look at ways to uh, have job creation, uh, again, economic development, and so forth. So that certainly is going to be an area of interest for me. Great. Okay. Um, Leslie Bauer. Leslie. Hi there. I'm Leslie Bauer and I am representing the Howard County Farm Bureau. I'm president of the Farm Bureau. I have lived in Howard County for a little over 40 years. Um, Howard County um, has currently has roughly 300 farms in the county. Agriculture is the fifth largest economic driver within the state of Maryland. And um, Howard County has the most horses per acre of any county in the nation. So it, it is a big industry within Howard County. And my goal would be that as the county continues to grow, I would just like to ensure that farms, both old and new, um, can continue to coexist and be viable uh, with both the neighbors and the community. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, next up, we have Lori Lilly. Lori? Hi, I'm Lori Lilly. I'm the founder and executive director of Howard EcoWorks. We are a nonprofit with a workforce development and environmental mission. I've lived in Howard County for 11 years. I'm a new property owner in Sykesville. And my most important priority um, in my role here is to see the protection and restoration of our ecological resources so that our community can be more resilient to climate change in the future. Great, thank you. Um, Mavis Ellis, Mavis. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mavis Ellis, current chair of the Howard County Board of Education, soon to be leaving the board, but I have over 50 years of experience in public education, recently retired, so only 14, 17 years here in Howard County. 
um, living in Clary's Forest. My priorities have to make sure that um, we provide for our growing diverse population, for our students, for our aging, for um, new people who are coming in an equitable way, housing, cultural experiences, transportation, uh, education are my priorities. Excellent, thank you. Um, next, we have Meg Boyd. Good evening, Meg Boyd. I um, live and own property in Elkridge, Maryland, have uh, been a resident for almost 50 years of the county. Professionally, I'm the executive director of the Howard County Conservancy. We are an environmental education center, and we also hold conservation easements on 1900 acres across Howard County. So certainly preservation is a priority. Um, but I will also use the word that I think Kathy Grace and a few other folks use, which is balance. And I think that is incredibly important. And um, especially now when we see the use that our parks and our trails are getting, um, that that really is a huge need in our community and certainly a priority for me. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Olivia Faro, or Faro, Olivia? Good evening, everyone. Olivia Farrow. I am a member of the Howard County Environmental Sustainability Board, so I think that's why I'm on this particular board. Um, and I actually am also, um, I also work for St. Agnes Healthcare, which has a fairly large footprint here in Howard County. Um, I have been living in Howard County about 25 years. I live in Columbia. And I think what I'm really looking for um, you know, clearly uh, we wanna make sure that we're ensuring the goals of the Environmental Sustainability Board and the Office of Community Sustainability. Um, but to that effect, you know, really looking at making sure that everyone has access to the wealth of resources here in Howard County. And so figuring out how we can uh, eliminate some of those barriers and also, um, you know, ensure that our, um, you know, the work we do around diversity and the strong diversity um, makeup that we have here is maintained. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat Marshall, Pat. Good evening, everybody. My name is Pat Marshall. I've lived in a county for uh, about 16 years now. I, I think I'm here to represent the Howard County Housing Commission. I'm a commissioner, newly minted um, commissioner. I'm also a very av um, vocal and um, involved PTSA pre uh, uh, parent at Wild Lake High School. I have a junior there and a recent graduate at uh, College Park. And um, during my day hours, I'm a business advisor for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. And I think uh, given my background, um, I my objective for the plan would be for it to um, involve or consider affordability to consider to continue to consider affordability in the county um, to continue to embrace diversity and um, also to really capitalize on the educated workforce we have the students who graduate and go off to college and have them to come back to want to live here and work here and um, finally for it to be a hub for small businesses thank you great thank you uh, Paul Verchinski, Paul. Paul, I know, is on the phone. We can give him a moment to unmute. We may, um, we'll come back. We'll try again. Oh, I see he's unmuted. Paul? Uh, yes, good evening. This is Paul Verchinski. I'm a former director of planning for the Federal Transit Administration, USDOT. I guess I would characterize myself as a community activist. I'm currently on the board of the Howard County Citizens Association, as well as the Oakland Mills Board. And I was appointed by the governor to the Zero Emissions Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Council. Um, I've lived here since 1973, 
And my interests are in transportation, sustainability, and housing issues. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, I see uh, Philip Dodge. Hi there, I'm Philip Dodge. I'm the executive director of the Downtown Columbia Partnership. I guess I live, work, and own property here. I moved here in the late 80s, graduated from Oakland Mills High School, left for college and early career, and then I've been back here as an adult for about 14 years. As far as priority goes, I'd like to see a balance between a strong economy and quality of life and sort of following up on what Jahan Tab said, you know, I want to make sure it's a community where my kids will want to come back just like I did. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, Robin Holiday. Robin. Hello, everyone. My name is Robin Holiday. I have lived in Columbia, Maryland for about 15 years. Um, I own um, a home here, live, uh, work, and have a small business here. I think that I'm on this in this group because I do have a small business. I was destroyed twice by the two floods in Ellicott City. I have now rebuilt a third time um, at Savage Mill. Um, I agree with everything people have said on this call. Um, in terms of what I would say, what my priorities were, they are equity, balance, opportunity. Um, often Howard County is um, advertised for its affluentness and for its intellectual capabilities. And while they are wonderful things, that is not all of who Howard County is. And so um, I hope that will be included in what we come up with. Given that I am a small business, I do really care about that too. Um, there are the affluent developers and then there are very tiny small businesses like my own and I, I hope that they are considered as we move forward. And of course, being a, I own an art gallery, Horse Spirit Arts Gallery, sorry about that. I care about how the arts are integrated into our community. I believe that the arts um, enhance our humanity. So I think they're very important. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry Zaret. Sherry? Hi, good evening. Um, I am uh, currently serving on the CA uh, Board of Directors representing the Village of King's Contrivance. And um, I've been on the Village Board and have participated um, in several countywide commissions. Um, I've lived in Howard County now for uh, 30 years. It's, it's hard to believe. Um, before that, my husband and I as academics traveled um, and we were two years here and two years there. And um, and when we came to Columbia and Howard County, this is where we really put down our roots. I think as I look to the future of the general plan, um, I want to make sure that succeeding generations have the same opportunity, the same sense of joy that we have found here. And I think that that will come about by recognizing the diversity in our community, which is our strength, the equity that we need to continue to provide between members of our community. And we need to pay um, certainly additional attention to the issue of environmental sustainability. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, Steve Breeden, Steve. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Steve, in the middle of the screen. Give you a moment there. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, Steve Breeden, I, uh, I've lived in the county for 61 years my whole life. So, so far, I'm earning more than that. And maybe I'm the eighth generation that's been here. So, we've been here for a while. I might be one of those affluent developers that was just referred to. I'm not quite sure what that means exactly. My priority is economic sustainability kind of long-term growth, I worry about, you know, we've been living off the of growth now for the last 60 years and there's not much land left. How are we going to continue to sustain ourselves without that? Um, I'm currently on the uh, the master plan, the Howard County master plan for housing. That that group is, is working on things. And uh, I mean, I just want my kids to have the same ability that we've had. It's just been a wonderful place to live for a long time and I want to make sure it stays that way. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Snellgrove. Uh, good evening, everyone. Again, Steve Snellgrove. I guess I represent two organizations. I'm the president of Howard County General Hospital, 
and I am the chairman of the uh, Howard County Economic Development Authority. Um, I guess in terms of goals that I would have, um, it would be for a balanced plan that um, is embraced by the community and all the elected officials so that it is actually able to be deployed in our community. I'd also like to see on an annual basis representation from this committee or the planning board uh, to report back out to the community as to whether or not the plan is actually being executed. I have some experience in the space as I was the chairman of the city county planning board in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, North Carolina, and I chaired the citizen steering committee writing their comprehensive plan. So my goal is for balanced growth, sustainable growth, execution of the plan, and to make Howard County the healthiest community in America. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Sue Song, Sue? Uh, I'm sorry that I lost you. I don't know what happened. My laptop is not working, so I'm on the phone. At least okay, that. yeah, we well, can hear you. Uh, my name is Sue Song. I am representing Korean community and also senior community as a uh, commissioner on the a, uh, aging uh, department. And uh, I live in Howard County more than 40 years. And um, I really like to see all of those diversity inclusion uh, in our planning, include some of those like a population that who has uh, uh, poor, um, the English speaking population. So that's going to be my goal. Okay, thank you. Um, next up we have, um, and see if you could re-mute yourself, that would be great. Um, Tim, Tim Figa. Good evening, it's great to see everyone here. Privileged to be with this group. Uh, my name is Tim Figgy. I have a small uh, real estate, residential real estate and residential development business out in the Lisbon area. I grew up in Western Ellicott City on a dairy farm and still dabble with a little bit of farming here and there. I am a 10th generation Howard Countyan and a product of the public schools as are my parents and grandparents and my kids as well. Uh, my goal would probably be to see the plan have a great, strike a great balance between predictability and uh, I think a balance between predictability and flexibility, which are both key elements that are going to be required when we're looking for so many years out of the future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, next up, Tanya, Tanya Akins. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tanya Akins. I live and work and own property in Howard County. I've been here for just over two years a transplant from California. Um, my number one, and I, I'm representing uh, the library system. Uh, my priority uh, here is education uh, and also serving the diverse interests that strengthen the quality of life, uh, broadens equity and access and is reflective of the community voice, especially those that are normally less engaged in these processes. Great, excellent. Um, next up, I have Vicki, Vicki Cutraneo. I like how you say my last name, that's nice. Um, good evening, my name is Vicki Cutraneo. I've lived here for about, oh my gosh, my dog is working, um, 18 years. I live in Western Howard County. I'm the vice chair of the um, school board. Um, my priority here is in my professional capacity is school infrastructure with whatever the planning, um, however that goes, is to ensure adequate school capacity and infrastructure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And apologies to everyone whose name I have butchered tonight. Um, going back through the list, there were two people who were having some difficulty connecting. I'm going to try them now. Um, Ed Lilly. Ed, can you unmute yourself? And can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. My name. Oh, you're re-muted. Can you unmute again, Ed? There you go. It's showing that I'm muted on my screen. Uh, Ed Lilly, I, my main focus is historic preservation. Um, uh, active in uh, Ellicott City Historic District for many years. I have a small business called Maryland History Tours. 
I've uh, served on many of the boards associated with Ellicott City. Um, our main focus right now is EC250, um, which is working to um, tell the story of the amazing Ellicott family for 2022 when Ellicott City will be 250 years old. Excellent. Thank you, Ed. And then last but not least, uh, Larry Tweel. Larry, if you could unmute yourself, we'll see if we can if we can hear you this time. How's this working? Yes, perfect. Hey, good, good. Larry Tweel, I'm CEO of the Howard County Economic Development Authority. Um, and you know, priorities are, you know, helping the build the uh, commercial and employment base uh, for the uh, for the county in order to uh, be able to support all the uh, excellent community amenities that we enjoy: public safety, schools, healthcare, affordable housing. Looking forward to the process. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that covers our list. Um, Mary, if you wanted to bring the presentation back up for us. Actually, I think Matt, you're going to give this a go again, right? My first page of notes with you. It's fantastic. You know, we've been kind of immersing ourselves in data and reading documents, but to really talk to people is what makes this kind of process come alive. And it's just been fantastic being able to get all your comments down. I really do appreciate it. Um, let me keep going. And now we're going to go through a little bit more fast paced part of the presentation because I just want to get some information out there for you all. Um, so we all have the same understanding of what we're doing and how we're going to do it. Um, and then again, at the end of the meeting, um, I'm willing to stay on as long as anybody wants. If there's other issues or things you want to talk about, we want to make sure you have access to us no matter how long it takes. So with that being said, let me um, just continue to go through some slides to get some more information out there. Um, and so just like you all brought up all these different points um, and all of your skills and experiences, what we're trying to do when we write this plan is bring together kind of three spheres. Um, as I mentioned, we are collecting data and analysis, and we will be grounding ourselves in information. Um, but sometimes there are stories between the numbers that are really as important as the numbers themselves. And so that's where you see the community input like we're having today, as well as a long list of things we're going to be doing as part of this planning process. I'll review for you in a minute. Um, and then best practices. Some things are going to be like, you know what? We really just need to think of some other ways to do something. And that's where we'll be able to provide some in information back and forth. Um, on where we're going. All right, so can I just confirm, do you all see the three circle slides or not? Are the slides advancing? No, they're not, unfortunately. Okay, Mary, do you wanna just share your screen again and, and we'll do it that way? Yeah, you'll just have to unshare yours. Okay, no problem. Okay, do you now have control? Let's see. Yep. Okay. There you go. All right, can you see that? It's the circle with the, the three circles with the triangle in the middle. Yeah, so as I was mentioning, thank you, Mary, uh, first of all, but as I was mentioning, we're going to have all these three kind of overlapping areas of emphasis. And where they come together, where you see the yellow triangle, that's where the plan is going to come to life because we want to make sure it represents these things like I took the notes on that are a value of the community. They have some backing by the data, whether it's now or how we get there. Um, and then some validity or some validation from either that you've done it before or that it's being done somewhere else. And so we've got good, good faith and good confidence to move forward with it. So next slide, please, Mayor. So then what I wanted to get to is, is just to speak out loud what was in one of your attachments um, in the handout that was provided before the meeting, and it's the specific roles for this group. Um, so the advisory committee has six specific roles, and that may morph and change as we go through the process. We may ask you something else, but these are the six that kind of get us going right now. So first and foremost, we'd like you to try to attend as many of these meetings as you can. Um, one of the values is that you're starting so early in the process with us and you're going to continue with us all the way till the end. And so we'll be able to kind of lean back on that institutional knowledge and that history you have of all the building blocks we've done along the way. And so 
your participation in all the events is greatly appreciated. Um, we also think, just like you did in the introductions, to provide insight and perspectives from the community. Um, and we know that you have other conversations within the community as well. And so even if it's where you have an opinion or an idea and you're like, you know what, when I had this conversation with other people in the community, um, sometimes I hear a different opinion or things. What we're trying to do is get everything on the table right now. And I'll go through why in a minute when we go through our scenario planning initiative. But this planning process is inviting us to look at all the different ways we can achieve something. So rather than having to find one way and defend it all the way through, we're inviting options and opportunities that we're going to evaluate along the way. And so we need your input to help us decide on those. You see, number three is to um, participate in as many things as you can. I mean, with a, with a crew of 37, where you already have a good number if all of you participate, but if all of you can bring one, five, 10 people, we're really getting good penetration into the community um, with all of our events. And again, it'll just multiply on itself. Our goal is to have as many fingerprints and touch points as we can in this planning process to make sure that the document feels owned by the community by the time we get to county council for the adoption hearings. Number four, you see, and I saw some of the comments as I was taking my notes going through. Um, we do really want to um, be purposeful and put out the extra effort to try to engage some of the historically underrepresented groups in the planning process. Um, and those can be defined as we go through the process as well. But we really just want to try to get what I call um, the non frequent flyers, um, just to kind of make a little joke adage to it. We don't want just the same 50 people or the same 100 people um, who have always been part of the planning process to continue. We want to make sure that we really get as much broad perspective as we can this time around. And we've got resources and activities scheduled to try to do just that. Number five, you see here, are, um, we want you to comment as we start to develop and these evolve these themes for the plan. And I'll go through what that means more in a couple of slides. Um, but really, we're trying to do a new approach for writing this version of the general plan where themes are more important than kind of siloed topics. Um, and, but in order for that to be successful, they have to be themes that are important to the community and things that can be solved within the 20 year horizon of the plan or at least moving us in the right direction to solutions. And so we're going to need your help, a lot of your help, on the themes that we come up with. And then finally, as we prepare draft material, we'd love to send it to you um, in order to get some initial reactions um, so that we can take that into account as we refine draft deliverables um, for the planning process and along the way. Mary, next slide. The next section I want to go through quickly is project background, and I want to do this just to make sure we all had the same story behind us. Um, as I mentioned, some of you might have different exposure right now, or we're given different information as you were recruited or you volunteered to be part of this group. Um, I just want to make sure everybody hears the same thing here so we're operating from the same starting point. So next slide, please. In terms of purpose of the general plan, this comes out of a document that if you haven't already read it, we need to get it in your hands and have you read it. County Council approved what are called the general guidelines that were recommended from the planning board. And that sets kind of our course for the future in terms of how we're going to do this planning process um, for HOCO by design. And we would encourage you to read it. This paragraph comes out of that document. And first and foremost, it acknowledges that the general plan is not the end all be all plan. It is a part of a library of documents that the county is going to have to steer its future. Um, but it is one of those few opportunities you have to look holistically at the county at one time. So all of these different viewpoints and things you brought up, the general plan is perfectly appropriate to start to look at those things, both as cross-cutting topics and how um, some of these might be grouped together in order to achieve a common goal. And so this is one of those great opportunities as a community to really look across the board at all the issues of growth and balance and equity and, and where you wanna go in the future. And then we also want to make sure that this relates to the other plans, either by taking into account recommendations or setting forth a direction for if and when those are updated um, so that we can make sure that we can implement. Um, I think somebody talked about it being predictable and flexible and another person talked about being accountable and maybe even doing annual monitoring reports and things. That's the kind of stuff that has its seeds in this plan as you go forward. Next slide, please, Mary. And just to make sure everybody understands, again, the general plan is not the only plan or the only solution that Howard County has in order to achieve its goals. But I do wanna talk about how it affects everything else. And so you see in this graphic that's here, broad perspective of the general plan, 
the general plan is, is an early discussion. It's early in the process. It sets vision, it sets tone, it sets goals and targets that we want to hit, and it starts to put the policies in place in order to achieve them. From there, though, that can't be the last word, though, for implementation. It's going to go through other processes and studies um, in order to actually get change to occur or to safeguard things. And so you see the general plan will start to influence things like capital budgets. It will also start to influence more functional and master plans. So when you look at something that's not countywide, one of the first things that plan needs to do is what is the framework that the general plan provided to operate within. And then there's this whole um, library of things that fall under Howard County regulations. So whether it's land development or it's zoning or all the things that come off of zoning. Remember the plan is vision and policy. Implementation then has to go through funding, whether it's capital improvements or through um, ordinances and laws, which would be all the things that talk about under zoning and land development. Then you've really cemented the future of the county once you've gone through that entire process. But we are working on that very early document that's going to set the tone for a lot of these things. Mary, next, please. We do have a general process map in place, and I'll invite you to study this in more detail um, kind of on your own after this meeting. But I do want to just hit the orange boxes for today. And it's just kind of the big ideas of how we're going to get from start to finish. Um, in planning cycle one, it was all about us just getting our feet underneath us as the consulting team, working with county staff, starting to get to know a few individuals just to make sure we knew what we were getting into and how we were going to do our process. For those people who are kind of um, objective based or like to check things off, we have finished that. So we're already one planning cycle behind us in the rearview mirror, which is great for celebrating success. We are now right now in planning cycle two. Planning cycle two is all about identifying these important themes that are going to move us forward for the rest of the project. And those themes are defined through data and analysis. They're also defined through uh, a very comprehensive and constant um, outreach program uh, that we've uh, started and are going to really ramp up here and we'll go through that soon. But really what we're trying to do in planning cycle two is get those themes we can get organized around so we can have organization for the document and organization for the steps that go into writing the document. As we get into the winter months of 2020, you see we have planning cycle three, which is all about scenario planning. When we talk about scenario planning, this is what I was saying earlier, that we are not going to just pick one future and then describe and defend it now the entire way. We're going to, to try to hold off some of those big decisions um, about things like future land use maps or some of the alternatives we might have before us as long as we can in the process through scenario planning. And the county staff is actually spearing, uh, spearheading this effort, which is fantastic with um, our assistance and as part of that, we're going to be looking at multiple futures side by side. We're going to measure the impacts that those futures have and then evaluate the trade offs and alternatives. So when folks talk about wanting to get balance, that's what we're going to try to do through this process is we'll look at the push pull relationships of some things and see where the balance is that matches the values expressed by the community. So I'm really excited to have a scenario planning component to this process. The um, kind of stories that go for the scenario planning will come out in uh, very early 2021. We're targeting January for that. And we'll, we'll take that out for comment and conversation. But then really 2021 is gonna be all about the growth framework that you see in planning cycle four. And that's organizing where the county wants to go in the future. How do we get there? Writing the document in order to capture that, thinking ahead to implementation. All of that kind of stuff is going to occur within this growth framework in planning cycle four. And then in planning cycle five, as we're in the summer months of 2021, we're going to try and write this document and then have it go through several different uh, lenses of uh, review and scrutiny in order to make sure we got it right um, before it goes for public hearing and ultimately adoption. So a lot of different processes going on, a lot of different ways to build confidence in the direction we're headed. And I'll invite you um, after this meeting to really dive into some of the blue ovals that you see there. And again, if you go to the general guidelines document, all that information is explained in more detail. Next slide, Mary. So we do like to um, celebrate some of the things we've accomplished so far. And so again, the general guidelines document is adopted. Um, we hope that you'll have already read it or will read it soon. We do have our Hoko by Design website up. 
And if you're ever wondering what's going on, that is the one place at a moment's notice to go see what is the current thinking, what are the current activities going on right now for the plan, whether it's 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. That's the one place to go to try to get the latest information of what we're doing. We also do have a Facebook page specific for this project. And so we would invite you to like the um, Facebook address and participate that way as well. Um, again, it's just another way to get kind of off hours or when it's best for you, some engagement um, back and forth. And then we have the on the table. And again, I'd like to thank all of you who have already spoken with Kate and uh, the rest of the staff about what our on the table initiative is. I'd like to also thank those who have already had an event or participate in an event. I'd like to invite those um, who are um, still waiting to speak with Kate or host your own event. Um, that it's just, it's so exciting. It's grassroots. It's just, um, it's not, it doesn't have a consultant involved or the county involved. It's really meant to be organic conversations about where you see Howard County going in the future. And we're really excited about what we've, what we've already heard. And we look forward to the future events coming up. Next slide, Mary. Now, in terms of um, the activities we have in process on the table, it is still going on, but we're gearing up for a whole nother push and initiative. We've done some things called physical assessments where we've tried to capture existing conditions and emerging trends in several different topic areas. And those will be, that'll be information and data that we can reference as we start to continue engaging with you on stories for the county. So we can make sure the data and the, and the um, opinions and aspirations are matching up. We'll be launching very soon a virtual community ideas exchange workshop we'll be going over as well as an online game that you can play about where you might want to see growth or conservation in the future. You get to actually play a game online and we get to um, summarize that information for our efforts. There'll be a quality of life survey that's coming out very soon, a resident quality of life survey that'll be in November. And then on October 21st, we have what we're calling our BYOQ, bring your own questions. Um, and it would just be listening sessions. And again, we just like people either part of this committee or those who are listening live uh, this evening, or even those who watch it uh, taped uh, versions of this to just bring your questions and bring your uh, your items and what's really burning in your head and your heart um, about Howard County. Bring it to us on the 21st so that we can make sure that makes our list of all the things we want to consider, study, and evaluate as part of the process. And then again, we do have what's the community viz modeling that's going on. That's the scenario planning. We've already started building our tools and the story for the future of what is now your currently adopted general plan and zoning and where does that take you so that we can be ready to look at how you bend the curve for different alternative futures and opportunities. So all that's going on right now. We're really, really busy. Next slide, please. Yeah, sure. Matt, just yes. one quick question that might be relevant here. Um, there was a question from Paul asking, where does the PAC formally get involved in these phases? Fantastic. Great, great um, question. So. Right now, and I'm going to show you a calendar in just a minute, but right now, the, the pack, you're, we're, we're all getting our feet underneath us, right? And we're trying to just get mobilized and motivated. And then we're going to meet again very quickly because we're going to want to meet again in November to start having discussions with this group about those themes that are emerging because we want to know your opinions on those themes as we start to think through the scenarios. And then when we get to 2021, I would start to think that we're going to be meeting at least every other month and maybe more during certain times of the year as we let this plan evolve and we're going to check in a lot with this group. This group was selected because it is diverse. It's got a lot of history in the county as well as a lot of great perspectives. And we're going to want to bounce these ideas as we go. And so for scenario two, it's going to be about talking to the themes. In scenario three in early January, we can talk about the stories that came out of the scenario. By the time we get to planning cycle four, we'll meet um, several times with the committee in order to bounce ideas off as, as the framework starts to form. And then, as I mentioned in the roles and responsibilities of the PAC, um, this group will be reviewing draft materials for the actual document as well. So lots of different times we're going to check in. We want to check in with you early in some processes to help you guide the work. Other times we're going to check in with you in order for you to shape our work um, and then sometimes to review and be the judge of our work. Um, and we'll take all of that input and opinions as we go through this process. Okay, so, uh, and Mary, you're still, are you on the overall project schedule slide? I am now on the HOCO by design project schedule slide, yes. Fantastic. 
Um, and so this is just your one-stop shop. If you're ever wondering kind of where we're at and where we're going, um, this is the highest level way to just sort of see what we're trying to accomplish and win. And right now, our goal is to try to be done in November of 2021. Um, as we do that, you know, uh, we got the, you know, we all got the COVID curveball, right? So we're trying to figure out, you know, what we do with that and how we um, uh, maximize our opportunities that we have and how we continue to have a robust engagement process, knowing that we have some challenges that we didn't know about when we started. Um, but we're really excited about where we're going and, and where we've been, frankly. Um, and so this is just something you can look at. But again, in terms of setting targets, we're going to hope or, or target to be done in November of 21. And it just kind of builds backwards. We're going to continue learning and doing discovery for all of 2020 that will lead to some ideas. Once we get to 2021 is when we're starting to evaluate those ideas side by side and starting to actually write the plan as we go forward. So again, if either you have a question or somebody you're speaking with has a question, this slide is just a great high level review of kind of what we're doing at when and how we're trying to get to our end target. Next slide, Mary. Okay, then getting into the partnering framework, and this is where we want to enlist some more help from you. Um, as was mentioned in the introductions, you all are so well connected in this community. You have great experience and you have wide networks. And so we want to take advantage of that as we start to build trust and actually get more into the community so we can get more thoughts and opinions in the process. So in, in terms of the partnering framework, if you can go to the next slide, you see one of the primary roles of this group right now is to help us try to get the word out. I'll show you in just a minute. We're really getting ready for a major push in terms of engagement with the general public as well as key stakeholders. And as part of that, it's going to be you all as champions of the planning process that are gonna really help uh, not just increase the numbers of people that participate, but the quality of who's participating and the different viewpoints that we get. So I'm, I'm asking almost pleading with you to help us in recruitment and getting the word out of both the activities coming up as well as our long-term long activities, because this planning process is gonna be so much better uh, with the more people we can get involved. So next slide, please. Mary. And so I'm going to start by really focusing on the next two months, and then I'm going to get a little more general for now. And then every time we meet, we'll go back into more detail, looking about two months out from the meeting that we're having. So here you see October. These are our near term activities to try to do engagement and get thoughts and opinions into our planning process. And you can see on the right hand side, we have a, a key that kind of tells you all the different events that are going on right now. And then on the calendar, you start to see when those are occurring, the sequence of them, as well as how they overlap. The colors are, are nice, but also within each box of the calendar, we repeat the words of the events, the type and the name of the event, in case you just want to read the words in the boxes. This is, again, something we hope you refer back to if you're trying to do some recruitment or, or um, answer some questions about what's going on when. But what you see is the on the table discussions are ongoing um, and we hope that we can continue to really ramp those up as we go into the coming weeks because they're so valuable in terms of getting good genuine comments and feedback. You see we're right in the middle of the, of the month right now at the 14th. You see the red dot where we're having a planning advisory committee event today um, and then we're going to have another one in November, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, we as a project team will be meeting with county council members here coming up next week to make sure they're informed of what's going on. Uh, last thing we want to do is have surprises where some of them haven't seen us uh, until the adoption hearings, so or we're going to purposely make sure we interact with them quite a bit along the way. On the 21st, you see of October is our bring your own questions event. Um, and so it'll be an online kind of open forum event. Um, and we can get you more information on that in order to push it out. And then when you get in the last week of October, we really ramp up again and you see we're targeting the last week to launch our community ideas exchange workshop. It'll be a virtual event that you can come and go at any time. There'll be act it's actually a virtual room. You can walk in and experience. And then when you get to certain tables or stations, you're able to do an activity that's going to take you out of that room and then return you into that room in order to start to get some dialogue and some feedback coming our way. At the same time, we have the uh, Better Communities online game activity that will also be launched. It's a 24 hour access um, game, and so you can do it whenever you want. Um, it's going to ask you to kind of think through and apply some of these values that we've been hearing. Um, but also it might ask some people to struggle a little bit because when we're looking at how much growth is coming 
you have to sometimes struggle with where does it go and how does it, what form does it take and stuff. So we're going to put a, some uh, situations into the game that might stress some people out a little bit, um, but it's all healthy stress, I promise. And it's just trying to look at trade-offs and things and, and opportunities and consequences as we go through. So that'll launch off in the last week of October. Next slide, please, Mary. We then have our um, engagement continue into November. Um, and you see that the Community Ideas Exchange workshop, as well as the online game, will continue all the way through about the second week of November. And then we'll be ready to launch a resident quality of life survey. Um, and so that'll go out and go out through the entire month of November. And then you'll see on the 17th, for this group, you want to key in. That's where we're trying to target our next meeting together. And at that meeting, we're going to review all of the data we've done from the physical assessments. We're going to review everything we've learned so far from the on the table events, the virtual workshops, the online games. We're just going to put a lot of stuff out there and try to organize it with you um, to try to see where the themes form. Um, we'll bring some information to start the discussion, but we really want this group um, to wrestle with it um, with us in order to try to come up with an initial list of themes that start thinking about. You do notice that things tend to taper off as you get towards the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, again, we wanna respect people's time and commitments uh, during that period. And we're going to start doing our scenario modeling during the winter months. And so that's why things kind of fall off a little bit. There's a tremendous amount of stuff going on in the next four weeks or so. We're gonna really ask for you to help us to get the word out for folks who say, this is a lot, just say, yes, I know it is, but the way they did it, you can do it any time in a 24-hour window you want to. Please do any and all of the activities if they can, um, because all of them provide different perspectives and different ways to plug in. So um, attending just one thing isn't, isn't um, uh, always the uh, best thing to do. There are options to do all these things on different days, um, but we would like to try to get as many people participating in as many things as possible. Uh, Any questions, Mayor? Oh, yes. Thanks for Please. asking. Um, so just a couple of things. I think um, we'll likely be sending these slides to the Planning Advisory Committee after this meeting, al al along with the um, guidelines. Yep. Uh, and then also, um, it was noted that the Howard County Housing Commission monthly meetings on November 17th. Um, so wow. I think uh, that planning a next planning advisory committee meeting, it'll be, we'll send a, out a, I think a doodle poll to see what date seems to work best for everybody. Yes. Thank so you for that. Around that date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I always find that when you, when you start a new committee like this, all the dates are ish in the beginning until we kind of really get rolling and we can look far enough out, but yeah, we, we want to be flexible in order to maximize attendance. So we'll look into that. Any other questions, Mary? No, that's all okay. for now. You ready for the next slide? Yes, please. So, you know, while we're really ramping up engagement in order to um, listen, so we're hoping if you notice all that communication so far is coming at us as a project team, we just want to learn as much as we can from the community. When we start to get into January and then into the rest of the 2021 push for the general plan, you see we have a whole host of more alternative um, ways to engage and work with us on this plan. So in January, we'll be doing what we call our growth choices workshops. And again, I'm really excited because we're going to put multiple futures out there for comment. Um, so we're not trying to just put one out there and convince folks that this is the way we're going to go. We're going to almost invite some conflict so we can build consensus about where our priorities are in the different scenarios. We're targeting again early 2021 to have what we're calling our new town planning framework charrette. So those of you who were talking about having ties to the Columbia area, we're going to dive into more detail um, in some of the village areas as well as the Route 1 corridor. And so we're going to be taking all that good work that's been done so far as part of the Route 1 master plan, and we're going to work it right into this general plan. There's no reason to do amendments and things because now the timing is syncing up that we're just going to bring it right into this general plan. And so as part of that, as we do what we call our more design and detail, We'll be doing that in early 21, and it's it's the term called a charrette. By a charrette, what we mean is that the entire team is going to come on site, and we're going to basically set up an office, a temporary office, so we can all work together and engage with as many folks as we can. But what comes out of that event will actually be lot block and building type drawings 
And what it is, is it's one of those ways to refine the words and concepts we're hearing. So what I find when we work, we'll say, well, yeah, let's do mixed use development. And everyone leaves the room saying, yeah, that sounds great. But everyone left the room with a little different idea or viewpoint of what they meant by mixed use development. By actually drawing these things out, we're going to test that and make sure that that predictability and things is more certain because we've, we've taken those concepts a little further and refined them. So it's going to be a really exciting event, multi-day event in, on, uh, in the Columbia area. We also are going to be forming what we call strategic advisory groups. And those are going to be topic specific groups that are tied to the themes that we come up with. And we're going to ask those groups to, tr to um, have sort of a membership of local roots and perspective, but also folks maybe who do regional state or national work in that topic so that they can help us and, and kind of broaden our minds about what possibilities are. And those groups are going to be theme focused and then what comes out of those groups will be reported back to this committee for consideration. But just think of those folks as people who are going to do deep dives into certain um, categories or themes and then bring information back to this group that's looking more holistically at all of the topics together. Um, we do then have the additional planning advisory committee meetings. We also have a technical advisory group that's made up of all the different department heads at Howard County, and that's being done um, so we can look for implementation and how all those different library plans are going to work together to make sure they're all going in the same direction. We'll do a lot of policy maker briefings with planning board, county council, and other groups and boards and commissions, as you all mentioned, membership on. We'll also have a draft plan recommendations workshop. So before we even have the full document kind of ready and ready to go, we'll bring the recommendations out um, to the public to try to get some feedback. Um, and see if we need to fine tune and, and refine some things. The project website will always be up and running. And so that is the best way at a moment's notice to find out what's going on right now with the project. And then again, when we go towards the end of 21, we're hoping to get into our plan adoption hearings where we'll go through the formal uh, adoption process in Howard County with all the public hearings that go with it. Lots of stuff to look at long term. If I talk about long term and near term together, it kind of overwhelms all of us. So we really looked in detail at the next two months, but know that all of these things are on the horizon in order to make sure we have a very robust uh, engagement process. Mary, next slide, please. So then I wanted to get in a little bit, um, and this is gonna build on some of the things that you said in your introductions about setting targets for this project. As I mentioned, we're, we're purposely trying to do this general plan just a little bit different. Um, as some people mentioned during the introductions, Howard County is at a different point in its growth cycle right now. Uh, vacant land is running out. Um, you have uh, an abundance of open space, but is it all in the right places and can it be accessible? Um, all of these different things, you're now kind of in a new chapter or a new set of um, goals and conflicts that maybe you haven't had before because there's always um, been ample vacant land or those kind of things. And so as part of that, we're going to look at kind of where the future is for the next 20 years of Howard County and really emphasizing design, like I said before. And so we've already set a couple of targets which are grounded in the general plans that we talked about, but I just wanted to make sure I went through them with you here. So basically, next slide, please, Mary. Uh, are the big ideas for the new general plan, we've got four of them right now and we reserve the right to add more as we talk to you all and others uh, in the community. But one, I was really happy to hear about predictability and flexibility from one of the members because um, we're gonna try to write this document more like a playbook um, for the future. And a playbook understands that we have different things that come in front of us, different opportunities, and how do we react to those. We're also gonna do a more detailed future land use map than you have in the current general plan. We're gonna be more um, explicit and more purposeful in describing what type of development patterns, types, locations, intensities are desirable in certain places of the county, and then talk about their character a little bit more um, than maybe what your current future land use map does right now. We are gonna do the scenario planning, which I've been mentioning throughout the evening, and then the focus area studies, I'm gonna bring those to life with a slide to kind of show you what we're talking about in terms of deliverables. Next slide, please. Okay. So in terms of the playbook nature of the document, what I've kind of, come to in describing this is if you look on the left-hand side is a picture of a blueprint. Uh, and if you, if you build a clock and you follow all 999 steps of building that clock, 
that clock will serve you well and serve you for a long time, but it's assuming that you do each one of those steps. And if you skip any step or any step needs to be different, it's going to end up um, uh, not working. And so as part of that, we're trying to take our playbook approach where we have core values and principles, but we also are able to be able to react to different opportunities and challenges as well without having to revise and throw out the document. So we'll be doing that. Next slide, please, Mary. I've already mentioned, so I don't need to go over this in too much, that instead of doing more siloed chapters, like maybe you've seen in your general plan before, we have a, a transportation and a housing and a facilities chapter, and they really do a great job in that chapter, the problems that you're going to be facing in the future is Howard County need perspectives of all those different viewpoints and subject matters in order to have a successful outcome. And so we want to more define the challenges as themes and then look at how all of those different um, traditionally isolated topics work together to um, solve the issue. Next slide, please, Mary. As we talked about scenario planning, this is just a graphic to kind of make sure everybody's on the same page, but we are going to build scenarios for where we are now. We want to make sure we have a robust suite of decision tools and things that are there that are um, uh, that are trustworthy as well as robust enough to answer the questions that we'll have in January. Once we have those, we'll develop the different scenarios. And then once we find a preferred, we'll figure out, well, how do we achieve that? So again, by purpose and by design, we're going to have different uh, futures running side by side as part of this process. Next slide, please, Mary. In terms of the future land use map, again, just to bring it a little bit to life, we're going to be more purposeful uh, in the uh, way that we describe growth, intended growth in the area. And then next slide, please, Mary. You see, this is an excerpt from a previous plan we've written where when we really talk about what's the intended development pattern there, we get into it with some photos and pictures, but we also try to leave um, some inspiration through the hand drawings that we do about what is really intended with that type of place as we go forward. So that's the type of stuff we'll be trying to do in the document. And then next slide, please, Mary. And then when I talked about focus area studies and how we're going to be coming on site um, in the Columbia area in early 2021, these are just some pictures from our past events where we're literally drawing lot block and, and buildings. We set up a temporary office and you see some of the deliverables that will be coming out. There'll be hand drawings, um, nothing that's a final, final um, conclusion of anything, but that hand provides just enough uh, detail um, so that we do feel good about where the compass is pointing moving forward. So we'll be doing that as well. So with that, next slide, please, Mary. So you can see that as I'm watching my clock with four minutes left, we've tried to rumble in under the, the time limit, right? So we're here at the final thoughts. And so we get to uh, the last slide that says, let's chat. And as I mentioned, and I promised um, earlier when we did our introductions, that if anybody wanted to say something else they couldn't say because they didn't have enough time, or they have some thoughts or reactions to some of the things I've said since the introductions. Um, we just want to be able to stay on the line um, and have conversations with you. We're going to do it sort of in a lightning round um, like we did before. If you don't have a comment, just let us know. Um, if you would rather put something in the chat box, uh, maybe because you have to leave on time, um, or you've got more comments than the amount of time we can allot for you right now to make sure everybody's heard, just put stuff in the chat box and that'll be a record for us to refer back to um, and we can get everything up on the project website and those kind of things to make sure information is transferred. Um, but I'd just like to hear any reactions or maybe further thoughts that you have because of it. And then a commitment that I make to you for this meeting and really all meetings is, is as the consultant team, as a project team with the county, we're willing to go into overtime. So as long as anybody wants to speak, I will stay on the line with you this evening. Um, and so if people want to drop off, though, we only advertised it to 730. We want to respect your time. If you have a thought before you leave, put it in the chat box. If not, we'll go through again the round robin kind of format. If you don't really have anything more you want to say, just say pass. Um, and again, I'll stay on as long as anybody wants to talk. So thank you for your time today. All right, great. So we're gonna we're gonna get back into our round robin. If you have to jump, um, please feel free to email me if uh, if you're not able to chat and you have a question. So I'm gonna start at the top of the list again with uh, Angelica. 
I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. Uh, Kathy? Uh, the last slide or two, I appreciate the, the whole um, presentation. The last slide or two but pushed one of my buttons. Um, you talk about anticipating the growth that we're going to be having in the future. Um, are we going to be looking at scenarios where, you know, why do we have to have growth? Um, you know, can we talk about that? What's, I mean, yes, we're a great place to live. So that's number one. Number two is the lovely pictures um, of walkways and public spaces. And we were promised that in the last two general plans and mixed use and whatnot. And what we've gotten is watered down legislation on CAC districts and we have barracks. Um, with no public spaces, no public amenities. How can we in this plan ensure that we have public spaces and better walkable areas and co common ground, common areas in these higher density areas, um, not just private swimming pools and private this or that. Um, yep. That's my comments. Great comment. Thank you. The, just quick responses. The, the second item you brought up, we will address that throughout the planning process. So there's not an answer to have right now, but I appreciate you bring it to my attention. On the first item, um, we literally <laughs> I've worked in some places like Snowmass, Colorado, where they said, well, what if we want to be just big enough? And we said, well, just big enough for what? And so we got to have that conversation. So the, the direct answer is yes. In the scenario planning, we can look at different growth um, curves as well. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, next up, I see Chris Chen. Chris, I'm not sure if you're able to unmute, if you're trying to unmute. If you want to say something, could you give us the thumbs up? There he is. Chris? All right, Chris, we're not hearing you, so we're going to... Let's keep moving. In the interest of time, we can follow up offline. All right, um, Chris Wells? <coughs> Um, I think I would like to get a copy of today's presentation. I might have some questions after I look at that more carefully. Yes, yes, we will be getting that out and posted to our website as well. Uh, Cole Schnorf. Hi, I don't have any further comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, David Nitkin. Nothing for me, thank you. Okay. Uh, Ed Lilly. I'm passing. Okay. Um, Elliot Finkelstein. A lot to absorb so far, but thank you. Nothing new right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Grace Kabovchik. We request for the future. I appreciate the presentation tonight, but I, I like to read things ahead of time before you present. So if we could get them at least a week before we have the next meeting would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jahan Tab. No questions for me. All good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jason Van Kirk. Uh, you know, we're all here discussing what's kind of inside the boundaries of our Howard County, and we obviously coexist in a in a wider, uh, more diverse uh, region. <coughs> and, and I guess my high level question is, you know, how are our growth projections? going to be linked in with what the expectations are for the region and and how we are uh, interacting with the with the greater Washington area. Yeah, great. It's a great question because your your geography is incredible in terms of, of having to both, have both opportunity and challenges. Um, when we get to the uh, physical assessments that we'll be sharing at the next meeting with you, you'll see that we did cast a larger net than just the county boundaries on things like market and growth projections and economic um, opportunities. Um, so some things we stayed within the county boundaries for, but that specifically we did kind of look at what's going on as well. Um, part of it comes down to um, what we try to do is I try to get growth projections from, from our experts that you'll hear my term, visioning is great, hallucination is dangerous. And one of those ways we do that is to make sure that our numbers 
are kind of grounded, not just as what's happening in the county boundaries, but maybe what you're competing for outside the boundaries or what the opportunities are beyond the boundaries. So um, we will have that perspective um, for certain subjects in the planning process. Okay, um, next up, Joan Lankos. Um, my question has to do with, uh... We're, this is a very large sort of unwieldy group, even if we were all meeting in person, I think it's difficult. Uh, is, is part of what we're going to do in this process, uh, perhaps splitting up into to say three smaller groups to be, to be able to have more intimate conversations uh, with some of the planners? I think, you know, a lot of us are coming from the same place and a lot of us are coming from different places. Um, I, I would enjoy having small group meetings with some of these people on this same thing and not just with their art with the on the table groups and such, but with people that do have some that are coming from some place, <laughs> some background with some expertise. Um, I, I would like to have have smaller group conversations. Mm -hmm. Completely understand um, as part of the, um, you know, strategic advisory groups that we had mentioned as well as some other things we have going on. And, and frankly, each meeting, depending on what we're trying to share with you and what we're trying to get feedback and collaborate with you on, we'll do things differently along the way. And so one of the reasons we use WebEx is because we have the different rooms that you can set up and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so we are flexible on kind of how we're going to maximize our time together. Um, and we'll kind of make it specific to what each meeting needs to achieve moving forward. Thank you. Yes. All right, um, Joel Gallagher. Yeah, I appreciated the uh, discussion about the land use map and possibly having um, more richness in in how you paint the picture with the land use map. Um, but there was a question in the chat that got me thinking: When will the comprehensive zoning occur? Um, I I know we last did it in 2013. And so, and, and with that timing, see anything for this group to just roughly see like uh, a, a land use map designation could see zoning categories of these types so that people have a little bit of something, some information to walk around with. Thanks. Can, uh, can I have somebody from on the county side to kind of respond to the traditional process or maybe the way you're seeing it in terms of the, the follow-up rezoning to occur? I think that might be Amy. But the, um, typically the comprehensive rezoning follows the general plan. So once we got the general plan adopted, then we would embark on um, the comprehensive rezoning. Our plan is to do something a little different um, and to do a unified development code. Um, so combining our subdivision and our zoning regulations and having a more kind of modernized, organized co a code. And there was, a, there was a whole effort, you know, with a different consulting team to do an assessment of and set, up, set forth a roadmap. So we have that like preliminary work done. Um, so that second phase of all that will happen after the general plan, but that could be like another maybe two year process after the general plan is concluded. Okay, thank you. Well, um, the only other thing to add is um, all that information from that prior work has been shared with us as the consultant team for the general plan. So we're not starting over. We're well aware of what's going on in, in that process too. Right. Um, Josh Lennis. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, Evan McAlilly. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kristen Russell. We have nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Larry Tweel. Um, my my quick uh, question would be, um, and perhaps perhaps it was covered quickly, but yeah, is is as we're looking at various you know land use scenarios, is there uh, like uh, a, an economic analysis that uh, goes along with uh, goes along with it in, in terms of, you know, if we're going to have open space versus versus housing versus, you know, commercial land, is there an economic analysis that helps to frame, you know, um, how that how that gets blended into the plan? Yeah, good question. And I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't cover it all um, as I was going through it, but 
So we are doing an economic assessment in terms of setting pretext and giving us some kind of options and opportunities that are there. And then there's also being a full fiscal impact analysis that will be done as part of the, the planning process as well. We will have some information that goes with each of the scenarios so we have that perspective. But then it, um, a full fiscal impact analysis will also continue through 2021 to support the general plan recommendation. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Leslie Bauer. Nothing at this time, thank you. Okay, uh, Lori Lilly. It was a good overview, thank you. I don't have anything else. Okay, uh, Mavis Ellis. No questions at this time, thank you. Okay, uh, Meg Boyd. Nothing additional, thank you. Right, uh, Olivia Farrell. Yeah, a quick question. Um, since we really are trying to focus on underrepresented populations to provide uh, engagement on this process, I was just wondering. Um, City explained um, uh, they said they have seven partners, consultant partners. I was just wondering if any of them are minority-owned businesses. Uh, I need to go through and see. I know some of them qualify as small business. Um, I just thought I'd mention it because we are ready to engage different populations for this. It, you know, just curious. Uh, I would have to, I, I think uh, Mayhem Reichel is a uh, woman owned um, firm. Um, but I'll, let me check, you know, I would need to check for sure. I don't want to um, presume anything in terms of how the ownership is set up in some of these firms. Thank you. Of course, I'm sorry. Okay, um, Paul Virginsky. Uh Yes, I have two comments. Uh, one is I want to uh, reiterate what Grace said. Um, there's a lot of data and information to be shared and it takes some time to digest that. It's almost impossible to do it as part of a meeting. Uh, we need to get that as far in advance as we can. Uh, the second item is, um, you all probably know this as consultants, we're right in the middle of two areas, uh, Baltimore and Washington, D.C., but we are part of the Baltimore metropolitan region and not the Washington region. Mm -hmm. So they have all our growth projections. You probably already know that, but I want to reiterate that because people seem to think that we are part of the Washington area, which we are not. Right. Yes, we're aware of that. Thank yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Philip? Nothing at this time. Thank you. All right. Uh, Robin? Um, nothing at this time. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sherry? Yeah, I, I, um, I know that this is a, a very comprehensive effort that's being made, and I, I really appreciate the, the time and effort um, to be inclusive. Um, I would just like to say, if you can give us a heads up on some of the dates that are going to be coming up, um, mm -hmm. that would really be helpful, for example, to drive out to the village boards um, here in Columbia and things of that kind. I know we have a lot of people who would like to participate, so we just want to make sure we give people enough of a heads up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good. Um, Sue, Sue Song. Well, it sounds like it's a very comprehensive plan and I really appreciate it. However, I think I'm going to need a little time to uh, review the data and um, do some homework before I make any kind of remark, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tanya. Thank you for the presentation. Um, most of my questions have been asked and answered. Uh, the only one remaining was around the um, on the table site, I can see that that's 
You're able to translate that into various languages, but the documents appeared only to be in English. So I don't know if there's a possibility to get those in other languages. And then as we're pushing this out to engage community, um, if the marketing collateral would also be available um, in various languages. Yes, we, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, if you either want to email us some of the other languages that you think would, would maximize our impact, you can do that. Or if you just want to give us a list now, either way, but um, we're open to trying to do anything. We want no barriers um, in terms of getting the word out for this project. Thank you. We'll certainly do that. Thank we'll you. Follow up by email. Thank you. Great. Um, and last but not least, Vicki. My last. Um, uh, to add on to what Grace was saying about making the documents available to um, committee members, but also on the website in advance of the meeting, I know that I will be sharing things with um, the school community and to get their feedback before meetings would be helpful. So if the meeting documents could also be available to the public on the website in advance of the meeting, um, it doesn't have to be a week ahead, but just so um, it, they're available a few days if that's possible. Um, and I think the is there with the last general plan was there any sort of um look back to see where what went right what went wrong and what ideas is there was there any type of reviews just for my own personal uh because i wasn't part of that um i wasn't living in the county but it would be really helpful as we tackle the next general plan mm -hmm. kristen if you're still on do you want to maybe describe the monitor report you do if I am. I'm still on. Um, let me put my camera on. So the monitoring report is done every year, and um, we have a short term, a midterm, and we have a, a long term that's content that probably will likely happen if this isn't passed. But it's very long. It's it it contacts every agency. So it's 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 quite a lengthy and comprehensive, but there are still many things that need to be done. Um, we have done many things in the county, but I will say that the monitoring report helps us guide what still is left to, to and do. And those are on the website, so that's easy to access. I can yes. do that. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. on. Um, and then the my third and final question. I hate to keep everybody, but the I know there's a housing task force that's going on. Will we be presented a report from them? Because that's really going to play into into this committee. So did I miss, I'm sorry if we, if that was discussed and I missed it. No, it's a, it's a great point and a great question. Um, the one thing I can tell you is the lead consultant for the housing opportunities study is also our market and economic assessment consultant. And so that was in some ways, at least I celebrated it as a win-win because uh, we are very well informed of what's going on with that process as well as the data and things that are being generated for it are being considered when they're creating the data sets for us. Um, so we are trying to um, bring those plans as close together as possible through uh, the consultant efforts, as well as, as um, trying to just engage between the two groups. So uh, we, will, will, we be, will we have a report to, uh, or some sort of presentation or, or something as we... So I just want to add that the state law um, that was enacted, I think maybe the last legislative session, um, is requiring local jurisdictions as part of their general plans to have a, like basically mm -hmm. a housing element. Right. So the work that's being done through the Housing Opportunities Master Plan is really going to be is is going to serve as the housing component of our general plan. So um, there's there is going. What that cross pollination will look like, I, it's too early to tell you okay. that definitively. But there absolutely will be because we're going to be okay. meeting the state objectives um, through that process. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, Kate, did you say that was the last um, person in the round round? That's the last. Yep, yeah, we made it through the round robin. Okay. So hang on. So we actually have a couple of comments in the chat box. Well, really just one. Um, Chris, uh, Chris Chen, because his audio, he lost audio. He just wanted to share um, that he sits on the village of Oak Park. You know, he's sitting in the village of Oak Park, Illinois, which adopted a pioneering housing law back in the early 70s. 
Howard County is not nearly as urban, but Oak Park has left. So just as somewhere else to read that to look at. That's great. If you can, if you can hear me still, um, I grew up in Schaumburg, Illinois, which isn't too far from there. And so I'm, I'm aware of uh, some of the things they've been doing. And so we will um, learn from everybody around the country who are doing great things and what we can bring to this planning effort. Any other comments or anything? Um, again, I, I, as a rule, I try to stay on as long as anybody would like to talk about anything. So uh, if anybody has any other thoughts they want to talk about, um, otherwise we can um, kind of adjourn the meeting for now, knowing that we're going to be together um, in a month's time, plus or minus by the time we pick the actual date. So we're going to start meeting pretty regularly. And um, you know, this was probably the most formal meeting um, just because it was getting to know each other and getting uh, information out. Um, but we, it will be much more collaborative as we go through the future meetings coming up. Hearing no other comments, um, I'm willing to close the meeting here if, if others agree with me, and then we'll pick it back up in November. And we heard you loud and clear about getting you information before the event. Um, and again, if you have any uh, just questions or thoughts, even between now and then, just go ahead and email, um, uh, email the DPZ staff, and we'll all collaborate and either get you a response or we'll take it to heart in terms of how to improve our process. We really do like that feedback as well as how to do everything better. Thank you. We'll follow up with an email um, immediate next day. Great, thank you so much, everyone.